the milkfish gatherers. The sea sounds insincere, giving and taking with one hand. It stopped a river here last month, filling its mouth with sand. They drag the shallows for the milkfish fry, two eyes on a glass noodle, nothing more. Roused by his vigilant young wife, the drowsy stevedore comes running barefoot past the swamp to meet a load of wood. The yellow-peaked cap, the patched pink shorts, seem to be all his worldly goods. The Nipa booths along the coast protect the milkfish gatherer's rights. Nothing goes unobserved. My good custodian sprawls in the deck chair through the night. Take care, he says, take care. Not everybody is a friend. And so he makes my life more private still, a privacy on which he will attend. But the dogs are sly with the garbage, and the cats ruthless even with sliced bread, as the terns are ruthless among the shoals. Men watch the terns, then give the boat its head, dragging a wide arc through the blue, trailing their lines, cutting the engine out at the first sign. A hundred feet away, something of value struggles not to die. It will sell for a dollar a kilo. It weighs two kilos on the line, a prize. And the hull fills with a fortune and the improbable colors of the sea. But the spine lives when the brain dies in a convulsive misery. Rummagers of inlets, scourers of the deep, dynamite men, their bottles crammed with wicks. They named the sea's inhabitants with style, the slapped vagina fish, the horse's dick. Polilio melts means it is far away, the smoking island plumed from slash and burn, and from its shore, busy with hermit crabs, look to Luzon, Infanta melts in turn. The setting sun behind the Sierra Madre projects a sharp blue line across the sky. And in the eastern glow beyond Polilio, it looks as if another sun might rise, as if there were no night, only a brother evening and a dawn. No night, no death. How could these people live? How could the pressure lanterns lure the prawns? Nothing of value has arrived all day. No timber, no rattan. Now, after dark, the news comes from the sea. They crowd the beach and prime a lantern, waiting for the shark. The young receive the gills, which they will cook. The massive liver wallows on the shore, and the shark's teeth look like a row of sharks advancing along a jaw. Alone again, by spirit light, I notice something happening on a post. Something has burst its skin, and now it hangs, hangs for dear life onto its fine brown ghost. Clinging and exhausted to its former self, its head flung back as if to watch the moon. The blue-green veins pulsing along its wings, the thing unwraps itself but falls too soon. The ants are tiny and their work is swift. The insect shark is washed up on their land, while the sea sounds insincere, giving and taking with one hand. At dawn along the seashore come the milkfish gatherers, human fry. A white polythene bowl is what you need to sort the milkfish by. For a hatched fish is a pair of eyes. There is nothing more to see. But the spine lives when the brain dies in a convulsive misery. <laughs>